So let's look at Linux shell command arguments. So Linux has a shell, just like many, many operating systems, and you can do all kinds of things here with the shell. When you're typing commands in, the first thing you type in is your command. So if I do ls minus al, the ls is the command, and the minus al is an argument. Well, even the command itself is kind of like an argument, but we're not going to really worry about that too much. So if I type in ls minus a minus l, I have a command with two arguments. Sometimes these arguments are called switches. So you can see minus a and minus l are switch options. So let's look a little bit more. If I want to run the ls command, which command is it running? I type in which ls. And that tells me, well, what's really happening is that we are running an alias. And the alias is calling this color auto thing. And it's adding it. And what really is happening is this command over here, user bin ls is running. And it's getting these arguments automatically added to it. Okay, that's kind of nice. Now, we use the cat command sometimes. So let's do which cat. It's user bin cat. Well, so if I type in the command, cat command, it runs. So which commands run and which ones don't run? Well, that's all determined by what's in your path. So what's your path? So if I type in echo dollar path, you can see which directories are in the path. In the path, user local bin, user local s bin, user bin. That's where my cat comes from. Is user bin. Um, also, you can see the ls command is also user bin. So these commands right here come from user bin. So because that's in my path, it will run programs in that directory when I type them. If it was not my path, it would not run those commands, which could be very difficult to get things done then. So which Nano. Nano also user bin. If I were to remove user bin from that directory from my path, I would have to refer to the command by the absolute name. So if I want to do cat, for example, let's see, there is a file right there, program.py that I've created. If I use cat program.py, it runs the cat command and displays the contents of this program. I could also do an user bin cat and program.py and that will also display the contents because this is not searching for the program. It's just, it knows where it is because I tell it the full name of the program. I don't need to worry about searching through a path to find it. If I want to run the program, you can see that the execute bit is set execute bits set right there. So I should be able to run the program, right? So if I type in program.py, it says command not found. The reason it's not found is because the dot directory or my current directory is not in my path. So how do I, how do I run it? Well, this program, its actual location is in home Joseph program. And so I can pass it a bunch of arguments if I want, or just run it. And so it runs and it says R0 is this location right here, or this, this value. So I'm pass some variables, A, B, or A, C, B, A, B, C. And it says, okay, it runs, it says my arguments, the first argument, argument zero, is the name of the program. And you can see these are the other arguments that are getting passed over. So when I'm running the program, it's getting past a bunch of arguments. Because it's in the current directory I'm in, I can also tell it a relative location of the program, which would be in the current directory, and program. And I pass it letter, letters or values, and then it runs. It says, well, we were past this, and it ran, and these are the other arguments, or here one, 
2, and 3 are the other arguments that were sent across. Argument 0, 1, 2, and 3. When you are looking at instructions or man pages, you get information about how these things work. So I like the stat command. So if I do man stat, it displays information about the stat command. You can see right here, the stat command is the name of the program, the command. And in brackets, you can see the options. Well, it doesn't say what the options are, but it says that's where you can put the options. And then you have to pass it a file name. If it's in brackets, square brackets, it is optional. If it is not in square brackets, it usually means it's required. So the stat command requires you to pass a file name, but you can also pass it options. And then the options are displayed below, right here. I can do things like, well, stat minus F which would be display the file system status instead of the file status. Well, let's figure out what that does. So stat minus F program. And it says, well, this is the file system status for the program. Okay, so you can see things like, okay, we're in XFS file system and other things like that, which is nice. What about other commands? So if I do man... Um, what about my CP command for copying files? Well, it says that when I copy it, I can pass it some options. There's another minus capital T thing, and it has a source and a destination. So either I copy it from one source file to a destination file, or another set of options is I can use a source and a directory. And if it's a source dot 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 directory that means it's assuming more than one source and I can also do minus T and let's see what that minus T option does if I scroll down to minus T way down here it says target directory copy all source arguments into directory so basically if I want to do this stuff I can do it backwards and pass it over here. This is useful when you know your directory, but you don't know how many source files are going to be, and you're going to be running inside of a script. Maybe you want to pass the directory first and then use the sources later. It's just kind of reversed from the previous option. But you can see how this thing works. It always starts with the command that goes first, then options afterwards. And the option arguments could be well, some of them are little options and switches, and some of them are other things like actual file names, not necessarily switches. But it's important to remember that when you are running a program, there are multiple arguments that are being passed. So the echo command, echo hello world. The question is, well, how many arguments did I pass? The echo command would be argument zero hello world gets echoed as one little thing but it's really two different separate arguments the space separates them so when you have a space it separates things so let's try running the program hello world you can see that hello is separate from world if i want to combine them together and have them be one argument i can put quotes around them so hello world, now hello world is passed as a single argument instead of multiple arguments. This is important when you do things where you run programs and that have switches that require something to be sent as one piece instead of multiple pieces. For example, when you add new users, you do user add, sometimes you minus C for a comment and you might do a name like Joseph Colton, all in one quote, within a username. You can see that in this situation, it makes sense to have the whole name as a single comment instead of split into pieces. All right. Sometimes switches will have strange quirky behaviors. Um, if you look at the man pages for the well CP command, for example, some it's sometimes has a single dash, sometimes it has a double dash. 
in some cases, you want to do both, and sometimes you want to do one dash, sometimes you want to do two dashes, and you want to make sure you keep track of what it says, and make sure you follow the instructions carefully. All right. Sometimes you want to pass in things like slashes, and so it's important to make sure you know how that works. So you do man bash, because this is my bash shell. Say, well, what are my options here? And I can tell you, well, a, a dash dash singles the end of the options and disables further option processing. Any arguments after the dash dash are treated as file names and arguments. An argument of dash is equivalent to dash dash. So that's kind of weird, weird, weird behavior. So let's say we want to do program. And we can do A, B, C, dash, dash, E, F, G. Well, it does this. So this dash, dash thing is kind of a bash specific thing. And I'm running a program. The bash is running my program. And sometimes you want switches here. And maybe the file name begins with a dash. And so this thing, when it parses through it, programs generally, when they see this dash dash, they know that anything after it is not options. These are just file names or other arguments. They're not switches. Something to keep, keep in mind uh, if you ever see any people writing things like that. Um, all right. So what about passing things in and out of files? You can redirect stuff. So when I run this program, program A, B, C, D, I can redirect the output into a file. So output.txt, and then I can cat out that output. So this greater than sign becomes, well, something that the bash shell interprets as meaning something. And then the output is redirected into the output by a txt file. But what if I wanted to have this greater than be an argument I'm passing in to this program? Well, you could try a few different things. You could try, well, what about the slash? The slash is a pretty common thing. And you see suddenly, oh, now this is not just the greater than. It is now an argument right here. Sometimes you can pass in values and not know what you're passing in. For example, if I do dollar path, well, what's going to happen? Well, the path gets expanded and becomes something. And you can see the path gets passed in as an argument, not this dollar path, but the value of it. And so you can switch things out when you're writing commands. And that's useful in many different situations. So maybe I have a uh, uh, login. I think that's one of them. Nope, I guess not. Log name. I think maybe that's what it is. All right. So I'm passing over my username. And that's great. But what if I want to pass in my current working directory? Well, there's actually a print working directory environment variable I can pass. But I could also do something like, well, what else can I pass in? You can use the back tick and type in PWD and their back tick. And what they'll do is it will run the PWB, PWD command. It will take the output from this command and it will replace it right here on the line. So now the print working directory command does home Joseph. And so that's being passed as an argument right here. You can even complicate things by making them more complex. So what if I want it to be inside of my working directory, but I want it to be a separate directory inside of it? I could type in something like a desktop. And then it gets translated into home Joseph desktop because it's taking the PWD command running it. 
taking that, replacing this back tick, PWD back tick, with home Joseph, and adding this to the end, the slash desktop, and it creates this nice long argument. So there's lots of complex arguments you can create. We gotta remember, these are separate arguments, and if you forget spaces, bad things happen. If you add spaces, well, it's not usually a big problem. So I add a few extra spaces in here, and it runs and processes and says, well, this is really just one space, it's space. So there you go. That gives you a little bit of introduction to using the Linux shell command arguments and figuring out how things work and what you're doing.